Welcome aboard our home and trawler, Sea Venture. Join us and the crew as we travel, explore, and experience all the world has to offer. We hope your time with us entertains, inspires you to live the life of your dreams. If we can do it, you can do it. So let's cast off the lines and head out for our next adventure. Welcome to another Tech Talk. This one about the much anticipated Bulbous Bow Project. Before we get started on the project itself, I wanted to remind you if you haven't had a chance to check out our new website, cruisingseaventure.com. There you will find all the videos nicely organized, lots of information about Sea Venture, a little bit of information about us, some blogs that Rosie's been writing over time, a whole bunch, I think almost a hundred Q&As that we've answered over time. Maybe just the information you might be interested in or looking for. And if you go into the footer, you can join the Venture Club. Uh, while we're still working on exactly what that means, you get to sign in um, and join the club. One thing we know is that if we get these videos edited before our intended point of publishing them on YouTube, you'll get early access to them. Uh, there's no cost or anything related to the Venture Club. It's just a fun way to connect with more people. So if you're interested, check that out. Now, on to the Bulbous Bow Project. What we're going to cover is what Bulbous Bows are, why you see them on really large ships all over the world. We'll review a little bit of the history of Bulbous Bows, research specifically related to Bulbous Bows on large ships, what that has to do with the Bulbous Bow on Sea Venture, and then most importantly, research related to Bulbous Bows on boats like Sea Venture. What our goals were for adding the Bulbous Bow, we'll show you the entire build process, and then we'll finish up with a review of what we've learned and how it's worked out so far on Sea Venture. All right, first off, what is a bulbous bow? Well, here's a picture of a bulbous bow on a large ship. It's basically a large round protrusion on the front of the boat under the water line. Why are bulbous bows on almost all the large ships around the world? The answer is pretty simple. How it does it is a little more complicated. The answer is it makes them move through the water more efficiently using less fuel. Okay, a little bit about the history of bulbous bows. Bulbous bows have been around for longer than you might think. In fact, here's a picture of the USS Lexington aircraft carrier under construction in 1925 with a snub nose, kind of a precursor to the bulbous bow. Bulbous bow research on large ships for commercial purposes to save fuel really took hold in the 1950s and early 60s at the University of Tokyo. And that research led to the beginning of the adoption of bulbous bows you see around the world today on large ships, which consistently save about 5% of their fuel uh, usage as a result of having a bulbous bow. The bow of a boat makes a bow wave. The bulbous bow, the bulb, makes a separate wave by itself. The two counter each other out when built and installed correctly. This is where it gets really complicated for large ships. These two waves have to be exactly opposite each other to work. For large ships, they operate at a very specific speed, at a very specific depth in the water. And when designed correctly, the bulbous bow cancels the other wave out or creates a second wave actually that's directly opposite it. And the net effect is the ship moves through the water more efficiently. All right, now that I've taken a little bit of time to provide you my understanding and research into the origin of bulbous bows and the research behind them and why they're on large ships, the next question to ask is, what does this have to do with the bulbous bow on Sea Venture? And this is a really important question because the answer is almost absolutely nothing. There is an entirely separate body of research and work done related to small boats. I mean boats under 100 feet, trawler, yachts, ocean-going power boats like Sea Venture. And the reasoning and basis for bulbous bows on these boats like Sea Venture is very different than that of large ships and how they work and what they do is very different. And that's important to understand 
because I think a good many cruisers understand the concepts we've talked about, about bulbous bows on large ships. But it's a mistake to try to translate that research and body of work and why they're effective or not effective on large ships and apply it to cruising boats. Let's go over some of the research done for bulbous bows for cruising yachts. The first one we're going to review is one that probably has some names in it everyone will recognize, and that's research done by Nordhaven Yachts. And Jeff Leishman, the chief engineer at Nordhaven, and his brother Jim Leishman. They did a lot of research, a lot of extensive tank testing at the University of British Columbia, which has done most of the modern research in bulbous bows. Their research was first published in Passage Maker magazine in April of 2015. The research completed by Nordhaven primarily focused on if bulbous bows would make Nordhavens more efficient and thus give them longer range moving through the water. And the simple answer was yes, on every single model they tested, that is what they found. Their testing showed a 6.5% increase in efficiency on a 40-foot Nordhaven and an impressive 12% increase in efficiency on a 62. They did do some testing, though not on all the models, as it impacted pitching, that is the up and down movement of the bow. And the ones they tested, all also the bulbous bow, showed a significant reduction in the amount of pitching. Now their testing also showed, as is commonly known about bulbous bows, that they can make a significant slapping sound when heading into head seas that are steep. On the smaller Nordhavens, they decided not to include a ball, coming to the conclusion that the slapping sound and that potential sound going into head seas was more of a negative than the benefit of the increased efficiency of the boat running through the water. Jim Leishman specifically in the article pointed out the same is true with propeller selections on Nordhavens, and that virtually all Nordhavens are more efficient going through the water with a three-bladed prop, but in fact they install four-bladed props on all the vessels because it makes for a smoother ride. Again, it's just a trade-off. So for Nordhaven, they decided to add bulbs to their larger vessels, but not make them standard on the smaller vessels. Additional research has been completed by Bray Yacht Design and Research located in White Rock, British Columbia. Again, their research is done at the University of British Columbia's test tanks. Like Nordhaven, their research indicated that virtually all vessels benefited from the addition of a bulbous bow in the cruising yacht size. And they did, I think, some additional work on exactly why that might be and why it's different than how it is becoming effective on large ships. Remember we talked about on large ships, the, the creating the opposing wave at a very set speed, at a very set depth in the water. But testing on smaller vessels in the tank testing environment and research environment seem to indicate a much broader range of bulbous bows being effective. And they were able to determine that the reason was because why it was making the boats more efficient moving through the water was a different reason. You think about a bulbous bow and if you've seen one on a big ship you may have seen it kind of pushing a wave up above. That is water stacking up on top of the bulbous bow. Well this happens on smaller boats as well and the weight of that water pushing down on the bulb prevents a smaller boat's stern from squatting as much in the water. So the theory is that the boat stays more trim in the water, the stern does not displace as much water, thus making it move more effectively through the water. That's what their research indicated. And like Nordhaven, their research also indicated that a boat should receive a significant decrease in the pitching motion, that's the up and down motion of the bow, in seas. When it came to the characteristic slapping sound that's been reported when going into head seas that are significant in size, the research indicated that a slight change in speed or angle to the waves often could eliminate this sound. Okay, the last part of the research to review is what we'll call anecdotal research from our cruising around in Southeast Alaska this summer. We came across a 50-foot defever with a bulbous bow, 
and I knew that no defevers have a bulbous bow installed at the factory. We had a chance to talk with the owners and they were kind enough to provide us a good deal of information, which was really helpful. Their bulbous bow was installed in Wrangell by Keller Fiberglass. Steve Keller's the owner there. They noted about a three quarters of a knot increase in speed and a significant reduction in pitching as a result of the bulbous bow. We then started talking to commercial fishermen because we saw a lot of large commercial fish boats up here in the 60 foot range with bulbous bows. Many of those boats are deltas built in South Seattle, a very popular, well-known commercial fishing boat builder who now, by the way, happens to build mega yachts, but historically built a lot of the fishing fleet that's up here in Southeast Alaska. All of those owners that we talked to noted an increase in fuel efficiency, really important to them because they run an average of about 2,000 hours a year on their engines, and a significant reduction in pitching. Just as important, every single one of them we talked to said their bulbous bow had been added in Wrangell at Keller Fiberglass by Steve Keller. Well, this really started piquing our interest. And as a result, we went and talked to Steve at Keller Fiberglass. So after a lot of consideration, we decided to proceed with adding a bulbous bow to Sea Venture with some very specific goals in mind. The number one and overriding goal was to reduce the pitching on Sea Venture. That is the up and down motion. Now, I can't say that Sea Venture over pitches more than other boats. She may or she may not. I really don't know. What I do know is that since we added the paravanes, which have been wildly successful, we roll very little. And it could be the result of rolling very little makes us notice the pitching a lot more. The pitching is a very fast movement of the up and down motion of the boat. In Sea Venture, if the seas are pretty close apart, maybe eight foot seas, six seconds apart, it'll almost lift you out of your chair like a roller coaster going up and down. So uh, that's kind of the feeling that you can have. And remember in an eight foot sea with the paravanes, we're hardly rolling at all under 10 degrees, but the pitching is pretty noticeable. And I'm going to admit right here and now, the cats are really uncomfortable with the pitching, which makes Rosie a little uncomfortable with the pitching. I'm a little more okay with it. Uh, just part of boating. But we knew we can do something about it. So we decided to go ahead and do so. So number one goal, reduce pitching. Number two, if we increased any fuel range as a result of moving through the water more efficiently, we'll call this pure bonus. Sea Venture already has a 4,300 nautical mile range. She can go anywhere in the world uh, without a problem with her existing range. So for that reason, it wouldn't make sense to spend a bunch of money trying to increase range. But if we become more efficient through the water and can increase range as a result or decrease fuel costs by throttling back a little bit to maintain the same speed, that would be a bonus. So that's reason number two. Reason number three, if you haven't noticed, bulbous bows are a really big bumper on the front of the boat. And you, you may think, well, that's, you know, that's okay, but is that really important? Well, we happen to know one of the commercial fish boat owners here with an absolutely beautiful, really beautiful 60 foot Delta fishing boat with a bulbous bow here installed in Wrangell. And a couple years ago, without going into the details of all that, of how all that happened, not far from Wrangell, they drove that boat at nine knots directly up onto the rocks on a beach and uh, tore apart the bulbous bow in the process. They were able to get the boat off the rocks on their own and cruise it back to Wrangell where it was pulled out of the water. And uh, the bulb was temporarily repaired because it was fishing season and nothing's gonna stop them from fishing and went about fishing. And then in the off season, they tore apart the bulbous bow completely and rebuilt it from scratch. 
but there was no damage to the hull of the vessel itself and that's a fiberglass boat when it hit the rocks at nine knots and that's significant and the owner of this boat will tell you today that he is positive his boat would have sunk right there on the rocks had it not been for the bulbous bow so it turns out you're adding a really big crash bulkhead into the front of your boat. Reason number three. Been patiently, yeah, patiently waiting all day for it to stop raining. Not See, gonna happen. It didn't work. Have to walk into town with the marina now here in Wrangell. Need to walk to the Harbor Master's office to make, make arrangements for step one of our next big project, which involves sea, uh, sea Venture coming out of the water in a couple days. So we gotta sign all the paperwork. But it's about a mile walk to town, and it has rained literally an inch and a half today. Oh well, walk in the rain. Well, it's time for the haul out. I don't know why. This always makes us so nervous to take the boat out of the water. The idea of it just dangling up in the air. And I know they know exactly what they're doing and all that. But it doesn't change the feeling still. We were really pleased with how the hull of Sea Venture looked after our months of travel since being in Seattle. The bottom looked great. It was a chance to also give a last video shot of the bow of Sea Venture as she sat without a bulbous bow. Looks kind of skinny to me. So they just a light pressure wash and then move it on over to the shed where we could just squeeze the nose in uh, since the boat itself would not fit in all the way. Before we ever came out of the water, some exact measurements were taken of Sea Venture's bow and the beam of the boat, and the custom made pipe was ordered. The pipe is 38 inches in diameter, 20% of the beam of Sea Venture, 1 and 3 quarters inch thick, weighs approximately 1,300 pounds, and is 12 feet long. Once we got Rosie out of it, we were able to hold it up at the front of the boat. So this is the start of the storyboarding process where they are going to take these marks and transfer them onto the hull, which tells them where we need to carve. I think so. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> Day one was the process of simply creating that storyboard lines on the hull and the tube and the beginning process of cutting a large V into the top and the bottom of the pipe and gradually sliding it back, testing as they went along and making more adjustments and more small cuts. One of those measure twice, cut once kind of deals. Day two continued on the same process. Keep in mind, this pipe weighed over a thousand pounds when they started, so you couldn't just move it around by hand. It took quite a bit of work to pull it back and forth in position and out of position, carefully measuring both on the outside of the tube and the inside of the tube as it gradually worked its way back. Now, while they cut this V into the pipe, in the center section toward a little bit below halfway, the 12 foot length of the pipe remained. So while the total pipe remained 12 feet long, almost half the weight was cut away. During the process, they carefully weighed the pieces cut away so they could subtract that from the total weight and keep track of the weight of what was left on the bow. The next step, as you can see here, is grinding all the existing bottom paint and gel coat off the hull of Sea Venture. 
so that the fiberglassing process could begin to attach the bulb. Ultimately, there would be 22 layers of fiberglass. The lighting you see here is to help kick off the fiberglass given that it is November and fairly cold. We were then finally able to pick up and move the boat and lift the bulb now attached to the hull with a few layers of fiberglass up in the air. Not only did it make the work height better, it allowed the water to drain since initially to facilitate the installation, the bow of Sea Venture was tipped down. Here we're not only fiberglassing the outside, but now also fiberglassing the inside of the tube to the hull as well. This is structural putty. While it starts off one color, this bluish color, once you add the catalyst to it, it turns a reddish color, so you know it's mixed well. It was used to fill any slight cracks between the hull and the pipe. Then they began the process of fiberglassing. This would ultimately be 22 layers of fiberglass, adding more than an inch of thickness to this area. We add this to the inch and three quarter thickness of the pipe, and in this area of Sea Venture, several inches thick of hull. Between the layers of fiberglass, they then roll it out with this little metal roller that has teeth in it that makes sure the fiberglass is in place and gets all the air out. After three or four layers were laid up, they then would need to wait for the fiberglass to dry. Between the top and the bottom of the V, there's about 12 and a half lineal feet on the outside of the pipe on each side of the hull to fiberglass into place, and a corresponding amount inside the pipe. This left almost 50 lineal feet of fiberglass attachment area to the hull when adding the bulbous bow. This process added another 600 pounds, just about equaling what was cut away from the original pipe. This is going to be a wrap for part one. Stay tuned for part two as we complete our bulbous bow project, put Sea Venture back in the water, and start our sea trials to see did we reach our goals or did we not, and what the entire project cost, and our final concluding thoughts at this point about the addition of Sea Venture's bulbous bow.